Well, as it turns out, the Monitors Ranger Nick doesn't just love agriculture and the great outdoors. Less than a week after he proposed to longtime girlfriend Jess, congratulations guys, Ranger Nick grabbed his fishing pole and decided to give a lesson or two in pond management. Hey everybody, it's great to see you again. I'm here in Greensboro, Georgia this month. We're out, it's the end of the summer. You're getting together with family, friends, neighbors, and this month, I'm getting together with my neighbor. Mr. Louis Wyatt joins me this month. We're out on his boat, out in a pond, trying to catch some fish, and we're gonna talk pond management. We're gonna talk wildlife management, and hopefully put a couple fish in the boat. We're looking around your pond out here, beautiful pond, but I gotta ask you, something that you talked to me about you said worried you, and that is all of this green, gritty, kind of, it looks like grits in the south on your pond. What is this stuff, and what did you learn about it through something that's tied to the University of Georgia? Well, it's uh, called water meal. Uh, there's two basic kinds of, of this. There's a thing called duckweed and water meal. This is the water meal, and of course, this is the one that we have. It's the hardest to deal with, according to the the extension service that I had come out, uh, uh, Rick Smith uh, from Wilkes County and and David Daniels from Green County uh, collaborated uh, the other day, last two weeks ago, I guess it was. They were out uh, for an evaluation of this. I called them. Uh, uh, actually, Nick, you put me in touch with uh, with Mr. Smith. Told me uh, about his expertise in the. Uh, uh, in the field of water management and he came out very graciously spent a couple of hours out here talking to me about all the different issues that that we had to deal with here mm -hmm. and and the different treatments that were available for this of course unfortunately it's very difficult to treat uh, mm -hmm. and the treatment is extremely expensive the 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 best treatment for it uh, is not affordable for me because it will run about twenty four hundred dollars mm. uh, to uh, to treat this pond. It takes uh, about a quart per pond of a, of a treatment called sonar, mm. uh, but, uh, and it runs about $800 per quart. So it, it's uh, extremely expensive. If you can buy it by the gallon, it drops the cost a little bit. But then there's other types of, uh, of, of uh, things that are available, a product called Reward that mm -hmm. uh, it's a contact uh, uh, spray that that will will uh, you just have to get it uh, together and then you spray portions of the pond and it eventually will die now according to them the the poison itself or the the spray itself will not hurt the fish but uh, there can be fish kill involved because when this stuff dies and decays it uh, starts taking a lot of the oxygen out of the water so you have to be careful and not try to to treat but about a quarter of the pond at a time okay. so that uh, you're you're only getting a smaller amount of, of, of kill of the material so the decay process is even less. So it is a long-term process and, and it probably is something that's gonna require maybe two or three years to get it totally mm -hmm. under control. Yeah, excellent. And I don't know, you had mentioned these different ways to treat it and you had mentioned extension and I don't know if you happen to see that I do have my UGA extension oh, shirt on that. today. Yes. So I make sure I put a plug in for the University of Georgia extension and whatever land grant university you may have in your area, folks, these are people, extension professionals, extension agents that have expertise in ag and natural resources, 4-H and family and consumer science. They're there, they're free. Invite them to come to your property and get them to help you, just like those two gentlemen did for Mr. Louie. So, so helpful. When you're looking at something like this, this is an excellent opportunity and a place for you to fish because that's structure for aquatic animals like fish and turtles. Well, what if you don't have that? You may be wondering, why does this guy have a Santa Claus hat on? I am Saint Nick, I guess you could say, but if you don't happen to have submerged aquatic habitat like that and you want to create some when it's Christmas time and you have that real tree that you're wondering what to do with after the holidays, take it outside to your pond, put a cinder block or some weights on it and sink that thing. That creates structure, that creates underwater habitat in the same way that if you had a plastic milk crate, a plastic bread crate, very often folks will sink those in their pond and they'll mark where they are 
so that they'll know when to come back and fish for them. I will make one little note to you if you happen to use a plastic crate or a plastic bread crate like that. If you happen to submerge that, do knock out part of the side of the plastic so that if a turtle happens to get in there, it can get back out. Sometimes a turtle will get stuck and drown. But what a cool way to create aquatic underwater habitat artificially. Now most people would look at the bank of a pond like this and not see beauty like I would looking at this dead tree. This standing dead tree or snag behind me is a beautiful example of wildlife habitat for cavity nesting and secondary cavity nesting birds like owls and woodpeckers and different kinds of chickadees and even wood ducks love to nest inside of standing dead trees. Now, if you don't happen to have a standing dead tree on the banks of your beautiful pond, I got some news for you. If you visit a popular website I love to go to called All About Birds, if you type that in, do a Google search, you can find instructions for building a wood duck box. And I encourage you to put up a wood duck box. Put this up along your pond or even on a pole on the banks of your pond. But I got a little piece of advice for you, and I learned this the hard way. If you don't put up what's called a little cone like this, underneath of that wood duck box, snakes will love to get in and eat those baby ducks and those eggs. So make sure you put yourself up a cone like this, keep those snakes out of there, and keep those birds and you enjoying them for years to come. Man, I look forward to doing these with you every month. I have sure been looking forward to doing this one again today. Getting to hang out with my neighbor, Mr. Louie. Thank you so much for letting You're us welcome. come out and hang out on your pond and do a little bit of fishing. And keep those emails coming to me at rangernickuga at gmail.com. And last month, we introduced that new Twitter feed, at rangernickuga. And I've been loving that. Got it on my phone all the time. Until next time, for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick, reminding you that enthusiasm is contagious. And I don't know about you, but you can tell, I hope, that Mr. Louie and I love being out here together and enjoying this. Enthusiasm is contagious. Pass it on, and I will see you again next month. Thanks for watching.